my students and I have been working on two projects that were designed to bring the power of semantic technologies and semantic representations to the world of standards development. Um, the two standards in question in this case were a standard for the smart grid, smart electrical grid, and another standard for communications of medical device information. Uh, what we've done is convert these standards, which in the case of the smart grid was represented in UML, the Unified Modeling Language, into the semantic web language of OWL, web ontology language. In the case of the medical device uh, communications, actually it was worse than that. It was uh, the normative form of the standard was in PDF, so it had to be converted into this web ontology language. Once we had it in that language representation, we were able to uh, use uh, very powerful languages such as Sparkle, which is a query language, to make uh, inferences over these models to detect inconsistencies, uh, contradictions in these standards. So that's what's called validation of the standard, checking to make sure the standard is of good quality. And then in the medical device uh, example, we also use the power of Sparkle to actually perform mappings between a simplified ontology and the IEEE 11073 standard, which was derived from the PDF. So it allows uh, one community, which may not be familiar with the standard, to map their concepts into this new context of the standards world. So it's examples like that where we have uh, OWL and Sparkle combined with inferencing technology that allows us to really reduce the cost of the development of the standard, improve the quality of the standard, and ultimately drive down the cost of medical devices, the smart electrical grid, um, so that they can be more rapidly deployed and economically deployed. My name is Surbi, and I'm a student in the software engineering program at Carnegie Mellon Silicon Valley. As part of this research, um, we analyzed the need for, um, for the web client that we built. Currently, over 200 models are waiting to be included in the catalog of standards uh, and are being analyzed by the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel. These standards, however, um, have uh, overlapping, different, and sometimes even contradictory vocabularies and definitions, giving us the opportunity to build a web client that would uh, have us validate these models and uncover inconsistencies in, their, uh, in the data types, in the components, and definitions. The web plan that we've built as part of this uh, research project allows us to query, inconsist query for inconsistencies in the model. Um, let me take you through a sample query uh, that will allow us to um, find out all the data types that do not inherit from standards. In this query, uh, we can query for uh, different data types. Let me take you through uh, the querying of the data type duration. Once we hit the run query uh, button, as we can see that a lot of the values in duration start from capital D, while some of the values in duration st start with a small d. Simple, uh, simple, Inconsistencies such as these can be easily detected using the web client. Sparkle queries allow uh, the user to uh, make more complex queries. These queries can further be edited in this window and uh, tailored down to, to user specific needs. The end result is to harmonize these models and uh, make it more cost effective and have uh, people take lesser time to harmonize the models. My name is Christopher Antoyo. I'm in the software management program at Carnegie Mellon. And for the past couple of months, I've been working on a research project in the healthcare domain. So in the healthcare domain, there are a plethora of medical sensors that range from blood pressure readers to glucose monitors to temperature readers. Each of these sensors is accompanied with a medical device that is responsible for collecting data from these sensors. But with the explosive growth of smartphone usage, it opens up some really interesting opportunities in the healthcare domain. There are some challenges along the way. Each of these medical devices remains an independent silo of information. Patient's data is fragmented across each of these devices. However, what if a smartphone was to replace all of these medical devices? 
There are some challenges though. App developers just don't have enough time nor the access to all of these complicated standards. So what is the impact here? If the smartphone is able to become adopted into this ecosystem, it can drastically reduce the cost of home healthcare. Where a medical device costs a couple thousand dollars, a smartphone that's in your pocket only costs a couple of hundred dollars. So what I've done is I've created an ontology that maps from one context to another context. It maps from the home patient world to the hospital world. And what we've done is we've built it on top of the OWL, which is an ontology language, as well as Sparkle, which handles the really complex inferencing. Our ontology links to emerging standards such as IEEE's 11073, as well as schema.org. And so what our ontology does is it, it accumulates all of the information that is only specific and important to the app developer. So the app developer can concentrate on creating apps for home healthcare. So this is an example of um, a mapping between our HSL class and um, another class, which is a subset of 11073, um, focusing on the temperature um, reading. So what you can do with these inferencing is, so one example is, um, let's say a patient in Europe um, has a temperature sensor that measures his temperature. And he has a smartphone that captures that data and sends it to a hospital in Europe. Our ontology can default the units to Celsius, whereas a patient in America um, can, our ontology can default to the units to Fahrenheit um, because we use the, the non-metric system here, whereas Europe uses the metric system. So that is one example of, of really powerful um, inferencing that's based off of geospatial information. So that was just one example of infer inferencing, but the inferencing can be as arbitrarily complex as you would like um, using spin map. And SPIN stands for Sparkle Inferencing. So in the future, what, we're, what we want to do is we want to move the standards from a PDF-based to computer-readable computer format, which um, allows for more expressive data.